This is a reading from St. Ludwig of Scheidem by J.K. Hoismans. This is a continuation of the chapter I began last night. Jesus, to put her in the way of expiating this self-indulgence by loading her with abuse and ill treatments such as he himself had to bear, he satisfied her immediately. At this moment, Philip, Duke of Burgundy, who claimed the possession of the United Provinces by right of inheritance to the detriment of his niece, the Countess Jacqueline, invaded the Low Country at the head of an army and installed garrisons in various places. On the 10th of October, the day when the Feast of the Martyrs St. Guerion and St. Victor was celebrated, he entered Scheidem, where he was received with great ceremony and invited to a banquet to which all the authorities of the town were admitted, and also the curé, Jan Angeli, who was still living at this time. After the banquet, four men of Picardy, who were of the Duke's following, asked the curé to take them to see Ledwin, of whom they had heard marvels on all sides. He consented to accompany them there, but hardly were they introduced into the room when they began to make a noise, and when Jen Angeli begged them to leave, they pretended that he was the saint's lover and pushed him behind a little altar, which had been put up to receive the body of Christ when he came to communicate the sick woman. There he crouched in helpless misery. There is not a drop to be seen in this tavern, cried one of these brutes, who then lit a candle, tore the curtains and coverings of the bed away, and exposed the dropsical stomach of the wretched woman like a great bag of water. They were convulsed with laughter and said she was pregnant through her confessor. Ledwin's niece, little Petronil, was present with the curé at this scene, and when they exposed her aunt's body, she could no longer contain herself, but ran to cover her up. They wished to prevent her, but she opposed them with such determination that they finally struck her and threw her with such violence against the steps of the altar, that she was badly hurt and fainted. This encounter exasperated the scoundrels. They called Lidwine a loose woman, accused her of being the mother of fourteen children, and of getting drunk at night. Then, whilst one held a torch to light the couch and abused the martyr, yelling, They are going to take down the swelling, you dirty creature! The others dug their fingers into the stretched skin of the stomach and burst it. Water and blood flowed out in abundance from three wounds, and the bed was inundated. After they had accomplished this martyrdom, they went to wash their hands and then returned to abuse her. Lidwine, who had only replied by groans during these torture, then looked at them and said, How is it you do not fear to touch the work of God? Do you not fear the chastisement his justice prepares for you? They shrugged their shoulders, and after a parting broadside of jokes and outrages, left her, and went away. The curé rushed out at once for help. Lidwine's friends arrived, restored Petronille with a cordial, and put her to bed, dressed her aunt's wounds, and changed the straw of her couch, which was drenched with blood like the, glit like the litter of a slaughterhouse. The next day, the Duke of Burgundy, who did not know of this assault, set out for Rotterdam, but hardly had his army left Scheidem when the news of the crime ran throughout the town. There was one universal cry of indignation against the bandits. The burgomasters presented themselves at Ledwin's house to console her and to announce that they were going to embark for Rotterdam and demand that the duke should punish these men. Do not worry the prince on my account, replied Ledwin. God reserved to himself vengeance for this crime. The arrest of these unfortunate men is already decreed. And indeed the fate that awaited them did not tarry. The man who carried the torch and had so grossly insulted the saint was seized with vertigo at the very moment of entering the port of Rotterdam. He strayed like a madman on the bridge of the vessel and, falling, broke his skull. The second was struck down near Zerixi in an axis of delirium and was abandoned in a sloop where he died. The third, who belonged to the navy, was killed during a battle with the English. The fourth, who called himself a doctor, was seized with apoplexy near Sluis and became speechless. His servant then recalled his crime to him and asked him if he was sorry, and making a sign after that he was, he died. After his burial, this servant, who was a good and pious man, came to Scheidem to beg in his master's name that Ledwin should pardon him, and we may be sure that this favor was willingly granted. This dreadful adventure distressed the saint for years. She wept, 
not so much over the wounds she had received as over the perversity of those miscreants whom her prayers did not succeed in rescuing, and she would not let anyone pity her in her sufferings. Weep, rather, she said one day, for the magistrates and bailiffs of Shidom, who chatter amongst themselves over this affair. Weep for yourselves, for I see you menaced with a danger you know nothing of. And indeed, a short time afterwards, they were convicted of treason by the Duke of Burgundy and threatened with execution. After these events, the angel of the Lord came to Lidwine and said, The divine spouse admits you, according to your desire, to the tortures of the passion. You have suffered abuse. You have been stripped and covered with shame. You have poured out blood and water by your wounds. Be joyful, my sister, for the brutality of these men of Picardy has helped to complete the number of precious stones which were still lacking in your crown.'